Good evening. Welcome to this meeting of the Merrimack School Board this Wednesday evening, February 4th, 2014. Would you all rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. a couple of quick comments before uh, we begin. Uh, the first is that this is a rescheduled meeting from Monday, February 2nd, which was canceled or postponed till tonight due to the snowstorm. And uh, student representative uh, Kira Crowley is excused from this evening's meeting. Uh, which takes us to item number two, approval of minutes. Uh, we have three sets of minutes to approve tonight. Uh, we'll take them one at a time. Uh, the first is the January 7th, 2015 minutes. Is there a motion made by Ms. Barnes, seconded by Mr. Schneider to accept the minutes? Are there any amendments? Okay, on this one I had just a few, or maybe a couple. Uh, page one, line 34. Um, I think the sentence would be clearer if it said consisted of a slight increase to per pupil cost. So if we could insert increase to. And on page five, line 251, Principal Johnson explained that the boys and girls freshman soccer will return in 2015-16. So if we can replace with with will. Line 263, the same page. Board member Schneider asked for the, I believe it was the additional amount needed to fund 100% of the co-curricular. So if we can insert additional. Uh, page 7, line 364, uh, district portion of the budget are mandatory by law or contract. And that's it for the January 7th minutes. So those, oh, yes. I just had two suggestions. Sure. Um, one of them is just maybe a format or something um, with within each um, entity like the elementary schools the middle school um, it starts out you know consistently which is great um, where it explains that the administrators answered question pre-submitted questions from the board and I thought maybe indenting it with bullets or something made it clear that I mean it does say they responded but it doesn't necessarily make it clear to me that those they're answering the questions that we had pre-submitted so um, that was just a suggestion I had. The second one is very, very minor, page two, where it says up to date, maybe a couple hyphens between. Oh, line 88, page two. That's all. Great. Any other amendments? Okay, seeing none, we'll put these minutes to a vote. All those in favor of accepting the January 7th, 2015 minutes as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed, none. The motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. That takes us to the January 12th minutes. Is there a motion? Uh, made by Mr. Schneider, seconded by Vice Chair Barnes. Any amendments? Vice Chair Barnes. We'll start on page two, lines 100 and 101. I would just like to add to the end, um, this is Vice Chair Barnes said that she did not support the motion, and we just want to add why, as it will take furniture replacement plans off schedule. So, not that I just don't say no, I say no for a reason. <laughs> and um, again, this happened on page 3, line 144. Uh, if we could make it read, Vice Chair Barnes voted, supported the motion as it should be addressed with the field project in the CIP. And on page 40, 149 on the same page, um, 
I just want a little add, added clarity because um, it basically was to remove the computer technician position from the proposed budget. I'll just add the language as we are eliminated, eliminating positions already in place and adding one not in existence, which was the, the reason for my um, request to remove the position. And finally, on page one, uh, page four, line 167, I just want to add, um, increase the co-curricular transportation account from 33,000 to 36,000 to account for the lack of increase in the 2014-15 budget. Just not throwing money at it, having a reason for it, so. And that's what I had. Thank you. Any other amendments? Ms. Gwellyum. Page two, line 70, um, where it states, Board Member Gualyumi stated that discussion at the January 7th, 2015th meeting resulted in her support to keep the 21,175 online parent registration system in the budget. Um, similar to, to Shannon's feedback, um, basically I had, I had stated that and explained that because it was my understanding that it will result in many hours of support staff savings um, for support staff to focus on other tasks. So we had had a conversation where it kind of almost pays for itself, that it's a very smart operational move, as well as the safety benefits of getting that information entered quickly allows the schools to be able to contact parents um, um, very quickly without a delay. Um, similar on the same page, line 102, says board member Gualyumi noted that in the middle school lab, stools needed to be replaced and I believe I made a statement, you know, based on my experience on the budget committee when I had taken a tour at the middle school and personally observed the condition of those stools. Um, I'm sorry, the, going back just to line number the same page, page two, line 89 and 90. Uh, board member Gualyumi expressed her desire to remove the cabinets at James Mastercola Elementary School from the proposed budget um, because I didn't believe they were critically needed other than cosmetic issues. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any other amendments? I have a couple. Um, page two, line 52, rather simple. Uh, just change the tense of uh, supported to support. Then on page three, I think line 141 is more clear if we insert. Uh, Board member Schneider felt if the goalposts were unsafe after an expert's inspection, the replacements would be handled through other means if we insert after an expert's inspection. And then on page four, section seven, line 187, um, I think needs uh, cleaning up to, to represent what was actually said. If we can uh, change this to read, Chairman Ortega stated that warrant articles are not yet ready for discussion. As it relates to the SAU and Special Services Office article, the Planning and Building Committee will provide a report to the board on January 20th, 2015. Additionally, the MESA contract, Merrimack Educational Support Staff Association, is still in negotiations. And then I think the next paragraph is fine um, if we simply include at the end that the Warren articles that we would review would include the following and um, the SAU Special Services Consolidation, which is the only one that's missing from that list. And that's all I had. So with that, we'll put these minutes to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the January 12, 2015 minutes as amended, signify by saying aye. None opposed. The motion carries 5-0-0. And we're almost done.
Now we'll take up the January 20th, 2015 meeting minutes made by uh, Vice Chair Barnes to accept, seconded by Ms. Gualumi. Any amendments? Vice Chair Barnes. On page two, we'll start line 66. <coughs> I just wanted to add um, at the very end, Master Cole Elementary School Principal Emily Carter because we talked about uh, Ms. Costa being at a different school. Um, and then on line 77, uh, we actually referred to uh, Mrs. Costa as Principal Costa, and I would rather we just call her Mrs. Costa because she's a principal in another district. So I don't want her to be construed as an in-district um, leader doing a, a dissertation if you just you know, took the one off. And on page whoops, four, Line 153. Oops, over shot. Um, I just wanted to make some edits um, to this because it, it wasn't really accurate. Um, what I said was I stated that the board preferred a gated entrance on Old Blood Road and a number of options presented that weren't accepted by the town. And then she expressed frustration is very accurate, so we, the rest of it's fine. Okay. Mr. Schneider. Yeah, I just have one on page four, line number 158. Board Member Schneider added, individuals who are colorblind may have trouble determining the color of a single flashing light meant to control the traffic flow. to add some clarity around what I was saying. Okay. Ms. Gualumi. Page four, line 151. It says, Board, Gu Board Member Gualumi felt a stop sign at Old Blood Road was the solution. That's not entirely accurate. Um, I had expressed safety concerns over the, the light solution as well as Expressed expressed my frustration. Um, and and couldn't understand why the flashing lights would be a preference over the um, the traffic study results of a <coughs> stop sign, for example. And that I was concerned over that not really uh, of that um, of Madeline Bennett not being having the right of way. Is that it for amendments? Everybody else? Good, okay. So with that, we'll put the meeting minutes of the January 20th, 2015 minute to, uh, meeting to a vote. All those in favor of accepting them as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, none. Uh, the motion carries 5-0-0. Which takes us to item number three on tonight's agenda, public participation. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board. All we ask is that you step to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Is there anyone looking to address the board under public participation? Seeing none, I will close public participation. And that takes us to item number four on tonight's agenda, update on the status of the intersection of Madeline Bennett Lane and Chestnut Hill subdivision. Um, at our last meeting, uh, Business Administrator Chevenel and I uh, gave an update of a meeting that we had on January 16th with town officials, uh, the developer and the developer's engineer, um, and reviewed a uh, proposed and uh, accepted option at that meeting. Uh, hearing the board's feedback uh, at that meeting, it became clear that uh, a vote in the positive for that option was not going to happen at this table uh, based on all of the feedback that I heard, not only from the board but also from the superintendent. Um, as such, uh, 
you know, it's clear that the developer has been more than willing to entertain any acceptable option at that intersection. Um, our position on the intersection remains in conflict with the town's position and would likely remain so. Uh, the developer has been delayed and continues to be in attempting to gain uh, consensus on the issue, should not be held up further. And ultimately, the school board doesn't have the authority to accept a final plan, but ultimately it's the planning board that does. Uh, so it was my thought that what the board should do is put out a position statement uh, to the uh, chairman of the planning board uh, stating our preferred options in order of preference uh, such that when the plans do go forward they have our full input. Does that make sense to the board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so along those lines, I don't know, Vice Chair Barnes, would you like to read uh, the proposed options and we can take a motion to put them in order? That'd be fine. Uh, so the following is a list of options to provide the planning board with the school board's preferences relative to the intersection. Option one, Old Blood Road, emergency use ent entry only, it's a gated entry. Option two, a stop sign at Old Blood Road as per Stephen Pernaw's traffic study. Pernaw, Pernaw, sorry. Uh, Pernaw. Option three, a traffic control officer to direct flow of traffic at peak morning and afternoon hours as is currently in place for the Merrimack High School and the Master Cola Complex at the town's expense. Option four, a programmable signal intersection operated by police or preset and managed by the Department of Public Works, having the ability to be adjusted due to bus arrivals and dismissals, school functions such as parent nights and sporting events. And then option five, sweeping curve initially proposed with stop sign on school property as per the initial proposal. Thank you. So is there anyone at the table who would amend the order. This is the perceived order based upon past discussions, but we've never actually voted on this. Is there anyone who would amend this order? Okay. Mr. Schneider. While I think option one is like the least path of resistance given this, given what I know about people that would be living there and stuff, I'm not <coughs> sure that it's necessarily appropriate for us to state that making a gated entry only is appropriate because I mean you've got 70 houses with only one egress in and out and that's through um, Wilson Hill out back that way so I don't I personally don't think it's appropriate for us to take that away as a, one of the recommended options so in my mind it would be potentially down to maybe option four something further down the list it's just my Viewpoint. Okay, so why don't we why don't we do this in the form of motions and discussions, and then uh, that way we can we can reach. Uh, so you want me to make a, a motion consensus. on this? Yeah. Okay, so my motion would be to take option number one, the Old Blood Road emergency use only gated entry, and move it down, and make it the next to the last option. So ahead of the sweeping curve, but uh, after the signalized intersection. And keeping the order of everything else. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you want to speak to it beyond what you already did? As soon as somebody seconds. Oh, that. yes. I'm sorry. I need a second. Is there a second to that? Second question. Thank you, Ms. Gualyumi. Seconded by Ms. Gualyumi. Okay. Now, would you like to speak to okay. it? Okay. Well, the sort of I, I did at the beginning is yeah. typical. I do things backwards here. But again, I just I believe that if I lived in that development, I'd want a, a second p potential way out in case of emergencies or something like that. Not for e ease to get to the school, but rather just a second way out of the, the area. So. Okay. Discussion. Vice Chair Barnes. And um, I respectfully disagree. Um, I feel that our role as a school board, when we state a position, is to state what's best for the district and the students in it. Um, a gated entry does allow for emergency egress. Um, obviously, we have a, um, the, the, there will be the police and fire will have keys to the gate if there need to be an emergency evacuation that will be open. So for me, I think what is best for the students is that option and that's our job and that's why we're here. And as far as um, the residents, you know, Wilson Hill is a, is a viable egress. Is it, is it 
what uh, the planning board suggested? No, but I think that as the district, we need to show what we feel is the best option. But, you know, and, and that's why I think it should be at the top. Um, I think it is in the perfect order. The only thing um, I would say is that we may want to add an editorial to the last one saying that we are, op we are vehemently opposed to option five, because I think we are. But other than that, I think it should stay the way it is. Okay. Well, why don't we take that up under another motion? So for now, we'll, we'll discuss moving option one. Uh, Ms. Guayumi. Um, I'll withhold my comment um, for later. Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion on the motion to move option one down to the fourth spot and slide two, three, and four up? Okay, seeing none, we'll put that motion to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. All those opposed. So that motion fails with board members Gualyumi, Powell, Vice Chair Barnes, and Chair Ortega in opposition. Um, was there other motions? Ms. Bar oh, Vice Chair Barnes. I dropped the hint, so um, I just, I move that we add an edited um, clause to option five uh, stating that the board is oppo is unanimously hopefully opposed to this opposed to this motion is there a second Ms. Gualyumi speak to it the vice chair Barnes just correcting my English opposed to this option instead of motion I, I'm for this motion long day <laughs> No further, uh, no, no further speaking to the motion, or are you Good. set? Good. Okay, Mr. Powell, um, I'm going to have to disagree and and vote against this motion. I just, um, I I think the way that it's written is fine. I don't think there's any any place for any editorial comments to be in a uh, a document such as this. Is what's going to go to the planning board. Um, and I think the planning board is well aware of what we think of, of option number five. So I'm gonna vote, um, I'm gonna be voting against this motion. Ms. Gualyumi. Um, I think that changes a little bit the motion itself, which says unanimously well, in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know how we, we kind of handle that part of it, but the, um, the question, I guess there was something that I, there's a point that I wanted to add somewhere, um, either to the letter or to the specific option regarding the sweeping curve. Um, and it's the point that the planning board had made this a requirement for emergency. The way I understood it, it was for emergency access. I don't have the exact wording and maybe I'm wrong, but if that is the case, then, um, then, I, then I think that having it have the right of way with the sweeping curve is kind of defies the original intent the way I see it anyways. <coughs> okay, so um, again, I would suggest if we go back to the wording uh, of option one, we take that up as, as a separate motion. So right now the motion on the table is to add language uh, that says that uh, the school board is opposed uh, or has been opposed to option five. Um, is there further discussion on this motion? Mr. Schneider. So bear with me for a second. So option number three and option number four are both under the assumption that there would be a sweeping curve, but there would be something to control the flow. So my actually, um, do we, to be c completely complete, do we change the wording on options three, four, and five to preface with a sweeping curve? And then the last one would say, well, whatever. It's going to change the motion. But the, the key is, is that we need to be consistent with what we're Understood. talking about here. Yeah, so anyway. we should probably clean that up. Vice Chair Barnes. I think the, pref the, the driving force of, of this opposition is that the stop sign's on the school district property. That's, that's a driving th disruption because that's going to really kill the flow of bus traffic and, and, and event traffic. So that is why, that is, the, that is the crux of why I want our opposition to be outlined on that very specific option. 
put some. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Chevenel, sorry, I wasn't looking at you. Thank you. <clears throat> if I recall in the uh, last rendition that we saw that um, the curve was less of a curve and it was more squared off um, perpendicular to the um, for oval. For which option? For all of them. That but it the still path, what's being called the sweeping it still curve as opposed the to the T-intersection. Yeah. I think that's the distinction yeah. Mr. Schneider's drawing between, okay. um, you know, the per now recommendation yep. versus all of the others, right? Which, okay. I, I, and, and I understand that and I think it's, it's pertinent. Um, is there further discussion on the motion regarding uh, board's opposition to option five? Um, I'd like to make a, a couple of comments. Um, Ms. Guayumi, you, you talked about the need for a unanimous, uh, um, the board is unanimous in, in sending this letter. I, I think the board's position need not be unanimous in terms of the position statement. It needs to be a majority of, of the board. Um, so I'm less concerned about that unless, um, you know, the board feels strongly that, you know, we need a unanimous uh, decision on this. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify because the word that I heard coming um, from Shannon was the word unanimous. So the second yeah, there was, and I, I, I prefaced hopefully unanimously. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's so it that's was, it was. I was just really making no. the point that as soon as Davis said, "I'm not in it," then it's not unanimous anymore. I didn't know Got if we it. needed to rephrase how we presented that. But. Understood. Thanks. Different than meeting minutes. Uh, harder well, to get unanimity. Yes, Mr. Schneider. Yeah, but it, just to clarify. The motion was to put the word unanimous only on option five, not for the whole letter. I think that was what you said. No, right? and honestly, I'll, I'll retract that no, one. No, I know. It's making a be, mess of things. Just want to be clear. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, as it relates to um, the clarifying statement, I actually think it's pertinent. Um, it's at the bottom of our list. Um, it's still not uh, preferred, and as to whether or not the planning board knows of our um, opposition to this or not is unclear. Um, and so I think clarifying it as part of our position statement is important. And so I'm going to vote for the motion. So with that, we will put the motion to a vote. All those in favor of amending the language on option five. Uh, to state that the school board has been opposed to this option, uh, signify by saying aye. Opposed? One. It's not quite sure. Um, that motion carries uh, 410 with board member Powell in opposition. Um, I heard a couple of other ideas out there while we were um, debating this one. Mr. Schneider. So I'd like to make a motion that we preface options three and four also with the phrase a sweeping curve comma with and with traffic control officer or with a programmable signal intersection because that was I believe the proposals that we saw. Just to indicate that that and um, and I guess to be completely clear also at the same time modify option number two to say um, a T intersection. I mean, actually, okay. Let's let's break them apart. Let's add the sweeping curve to options three and four, and leave it at that for now. Is there a second to that? I'll I'll, I'll second it uh, for uh, discussion. you Do you want to speak to it further? Not anymore. Okay. Um, is there further discussion on this? I mean, Ms. Gualyumi. Can he repeat that, please? I was unclear exactly what the change is. Okay. On options three and four, so see how option five says, sweeping curve initially proposed with stop sign on school property as per initial proposal. Options three and four are also a sweeping curve. So my promotion was to start the sentence by saying, sweeping curve 
comma with traffic control officer or sweeping curve comma with programmable signal. That was because all those two options were sweeping curve. Thank you. That was the Good. Any further discussion on that motion? Vice Chair Barnes. Um, the only thing I'm really not clear on, and I, I, you made clear what you want to happen in the language, but are, are sweeping curves or T intersections really what we're talking about for two, three, and four? Will it be a sweeping curve or a T intersection? Option two, the recommendation in the Pernow traffic study wa was to change the design of the intersection from a sweeping curve to a T intersection, okay. widening uh, the public right of way uh, beyond that intersection from, from Madeline Bennett up to the school such that it would no longer be a driveway um, and put the turnaround circle for DPW trucks further up beyond the intersection and then placing the stop sign on Old Blood Road. So I, I do think it's pertinent to, to define what that T intersection is. Right, and, and that's why I'm hesitant um, to say sweeping curve because I think a T intersection in options two, three, and four would all be better than a sweeping curve anyway. So I'm not sure, are we saying that we're endorsing a sweeping curve then in three and four they, over, or is a T are, intersection no longer yeah. optional if we say that, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I think if we do that, we're getting into a place where we haven't been. All of these are options that have been reviewed and or discussed, whereas a T intersection with a traffic control officer has not been discussed. Uh, a T intersection with a programmable light has not been discussed. Okay. And so I, I, I wouldn't want to um, invite that. Yeah, I think the clarity is actually helpful in this case. Okay. Further discussion on adding a sweeping curve with uh, to the preface of options three and four. Seeing none, we'll put that motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, none. That motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Mr. Schneider. Okay. <clears throat> the second motion I want to make is on option two. I would like to specify a T intersection with a stop sign at Old Blood Road as per the Stephen Pernod traffic study. Okay, is there a second? Made by Ms. <laughs> Gualyumi. Just to, to be clear that the preferred is, is to remove the sweeping curve and to do what the study stated. And I don't want to get into the details of the fact that it's a, now a through road with a turnaround move because the traffic study calls out that explicitly. So just by making sure that they're clear. It's a T intersection based on the traffic study with a stop sign on Blood Road. That should be enough. Understood. Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll put that motion to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. None opposed. That motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Are there, Ms. Gualyumi? Um, I have a motion to make on option number four. Um, that's the sweeping curve with the programmable intersection. Um, the last sentence, it says, school functions such as parent night, comma, sporting events, and weekend days during soccer season. So if you're like me, there are hundreds of cars. I live it, going in and out of there on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, there's so many fields, there's just sometimes you can hardly find parking. So I feel like it's important to address those weekend situations um, where there's a lot of traffic um, that goes through. Okay. Um, is there a second? Uh, seconded by Vice Chair Barnes. Further discussion to your mo of your motion? No, I think I just stated it. Thank okay, you. Okay, Vice Chair Barnes. I understand your point completely and I support it, um, but I just think you can clean the language up by saying school functions outside of normal operating hours. School and sport functions outside school of School and non-school functions? Functions outside of normal operating hours. I think that's fine. And that way it takes your MYAs, your whatever leagues you're in, into account. So, and so I'll amend my motion. Okay. Thanks. And you second that, I, I obviously. I second right? the amended motion. Okay. So the language is school and non-school functions outside normal operating hours. Okay. All right. Are there any 
further discussion of that motion? Okay. Seeing none, we'll put the motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, none. The motion carries 5-0-0. Are there any other motions? Vice Chair Barnes. If it hadn't gone this long with everything else, I, I wouldn't. It just opens it up. Um, Andy started it. Uh, <laughs> I move that we add in the body of the uh, memo that the board would prefer a T intersection over a sweeping curve in any design approved, <coughs> in any approved uh, design of the, of the area. Because I don't think we want the sweeping curve, period. So, and that's why I kept asking about options three and four on you, because I'm like, well, wouldn't you rather just have the T design anyway? So that was it. And Mr. Schneider seconds. Um, I'm assuming you've spoken to I it. I really have. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Schneider. Well, I, I'm all for clarity all the time. But I think in this case, you could make it a loop-to-loop -loop in those. But as long as it's got either a programmable sign or a traffic officer, you can handle the traffic, whether it's sweeping, T, whatever. I think the idea between three and four is we, ident we identify the fact that there is a sweeping curve that's there which puts the stop sign in the, the school property and we'll, based and we, we need something to overcome that so if you put a T intersection in there instead doesn't it negate the need for either options three or four unless you put the stop sign on the school property which would be really weird if it's a T intersection so I mean I don't want to overthink this too too far that's my only concern fair enough Further discussion? Yeah. Um, my only thought, and, and I understand where you're coming from, is that um, in stating the various options that we've reviewed, T and sweeping, and putting them in preference order with the T above uh, all of the others, I think we've made our preference clear. Um, and um, you know, similar to what I was saying before, I, I don't want to get into the uh, case where we're actually doing the design. What we're doing is stating a preference over designs we've seen. Um, and so I, I'd prefer to just keep it simple to our preferences. Um, any further discussion? You, you look like you're hesitating. You on, this on this motion, yes, to add that preface that the board would prefer a T intersection over a sweeping curve in any design. Um, so we'll put that motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? So that motion fails with board members Gualyumi, uh, Schneider, Powell, and Chair Ortega in opposition. And did you have something, Ms. Gualyumi? Well, when you remember, turn on your it. microphone. I got it. Um, since you've mentioned that we're only putting in here options that we've discussed, is there a place in here at all for an expanded roundabout? Because um, we spent a lot of time and we had gotten a study regarding the roundabout. So I'm wondering if I guess I would make the motion that the roundabout be option five and option five move to option six. Okay. Is there a second to that? Made by Vice Chair Barnes. You want to speak to it further? Um, I, um, when some of our, our town folks had come, they had mentioned some opposition to the roundabout, and they made some valid points regarding <coughs> the exact size of the roundabout. Um, at least that was one in particular that stood out for me. So um, if we're looking at really the options that we've discussed, I feel like um, that's one that we spent a lot of time discussing, so I feel like it should be on this list somewhere. Um, and I know at least for me, I prefer it before the sweeping curve with the stop sign on school property. So that's why I'm proposing to make it option five and moving option five to option six. Okay. Mr. Schneider. Well, if I remember correctly during the discussion, the, the fire department and the DPW were concerned, especially the fire department, about the existing proposed roundabout being able to get a, a truck around there. And also, I thought I heard that there was not adequate space because of wetlands and, and stuff around it to make the roundabout wide enough to be able to do what we needed to do. I think I 
I could have sworn I heard that in the discussion mm -hmm. that we went through, that there wasn't enough room to make a big enough mm -hmm. roundabout to accomplish what needs to be done. I could be mistaken, but my only problem is I'd hate to put something down there that's just an untenable solution overall. So, Matt, do you want to? Yeah, I, <coughs> I did hear a uh, comment from Steve Keach that the, uh, the roundabout itself would need to be tweaked to be a little bit bigger than it was portrayed on the initial drawing. Um, I didn't hear anything in the realm of um, it impacting any wetlands that I recall. Okay. I, I, I recall everyone agreeing that the roundabout needed to be uh, adapted and made larger. Um, I don't recall constraints around that. Um, perhaps there were. Um, Ms. Gualumi. Yeah, I just want to clarify, and that's why I had suggested the expanded. I don't know if there's a better word, but yeah. I used expanded, knowing that the one that was initially, um, I guess, you know, designed wasn't going to be large enough. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on adding option, a new option five, and pushing option five to six for the expanded roundabout? I I have one comment that's really more of a question um, and, and it's this it, the expanded roundabout was actually presented to us in the fall and we approved it um, we actually ratified that idea and now we're placing it at option five in, in my opinion it, it rises above some of the other options that we have here um, you know I don't know if it beats number two, um, but it, I think it's at least number three uh, before the others based upon uh, what the board has uh, proposed um, and decided uh, previously. The board didn't propose, the engineers proposed, the board had approved. So I think to be consistent, um, I, I see option uh, two, the T intersection with a stop sign after hearing from a traffic engineer with years of experience in, in this area, um, he came up with a design that hadn't previously been considered, and I see that actually trumping the roundabout, which was um, in, in some ways um, uh, an elegant or inelegant, depending on your perspective, way of trying to solve uh, mutual uh, problems. Uh, but I it, it was accepted by this board, so I, I would almost say I'd support this if we move the option. And I would amend it to make it number three, and then therefore moving three, four, and five down, okay. down a notch. And do you second, you second that? that. I okay. Think I do. All right. Is there any further discussion of adding an option three for an expanded roundabout? Seeing none, I will put the motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? One. Uh, so that motion carries 410 with board member Schneider in opposition. Any further discussion? So what we should probably do now is I will entertain a motion uh, to direct uh, the chair to send said letter to uh, the planning board chair. Is there a motion? Vice Chair Barnes. I move that we authorize you to send the letter to uh, planning board chair Bob Bess. Thank you. Is there a second? Made by Mr. Schneider. Discussion? Um, I think we want to make sure that the town manager and uh, chair of the town council are copied on that, please. Good point. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll put the motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, none. That motion carries uh, five zero zero. Um, I would just reiterate, uh, I, I wanna thank and uh, let them know that I, I appreciate the effort that the developer and the engineer have gone through in order to gain consensus on uh, this item. And uh, I apologize that um, for our part, 
uh, we haven't been able to uh, to come to that consensus but uh, I hope that in doing this we've moved uh, things along as opposed to holding them up and that uh, um, you continue to move through the process uh, unimpeded or as unimpeded as possible so thank you And that takes us to item number five on tonight's agenda, board's response to proposed warrant articles. Uh, this will be handled by myself and business administrator Chevenel. So I think perhaps the way that we will do this, uh, if you're okay, is um, we can uh, read the various warrant articles. Matt can give us uh, the background in terms of their drafting. And then what we will be doing is um, making motions to recommend and then we will vote as to whether we recommend or don't recommend the article. If a majority of the board does not recommend the article, it does not appear on the warrant. Um, and um, before we um, <coughs> recommend those articles, um, we can also discuss wording changes and or amount changes. So, uh, so both are both are open, right? We're going to be voting to recommend or not recommend, but we may also amend the articles themselves. So, Mr. Chevenel. Yeah. These uh, articles, as you see before you, have been uh, gone over by legal counsel already. Um, so why don't I just, you know, for the audience out there, and uh, very quickly just uh, go ahead and read them. Um, you, unlike the Budget Committee, uh, have to vote on all the Warren articles, not just the money articles. So we start off with Article 2. Shall the Merrimack School Board be authorized to accept on behalf of the district without further actions by the voters, gifts, legacies, and devices of personal or real property which may become available to the district during the fiscal year? This is an article that we have on the ballot every year. Uh, probably for the last, I don't know, 30 years. Um, we can accept uh, gifts of cash, which we have, which we have done at this meeting. Um, anything under $5,000, it just can be accepted on a regular school board meeting. Anything over $5,000 has to have a public hearing posted, but it can still be uh, put into the, uh, the body of the meeting itself as long as it's posted as a public hearing before the board meeting. Um, this is just to accept uh, gifts of uh, land, any legacies, uh, or anything like that, real property. Um, it gives you the, uh, the authorization to do that if someone would bequeath that. The latest, um, I think the latest uh, one that we did accept was the one-acre parcel from the town uh, that we are proposing to build the new central office on. That was the last one. Before that, there was the Ronker property, which is around 13 acres. If you're going down, um, what's the name of that road? I always forget it. The, the, the road with the steep pitch going down to Woodbury. Woodbury, how can I forget that? Woodbury Drive, if you're going down Woodbury Drive, it's on the right-hand side, and it's mostly steep, and it's, uh, you know, swampy as it goes into the uh, the back of the fire station but we were uh, bequeathed that also which kind of uh, fleshed out the entire complex so that's all this is for okay so with that is there a uh, motion to recommend what is titled article two at this point um, I mr. Powell had said he was not feeling well at the start of the meeting and so he um, excused himself and he is excused um, so is there a, a motion to recommend article 2 made by <coughs> mr. Schneider is there a second vice chair Barnes seconds is there any discussion okay uh, it would be nice if you were here but um, <laughs> uh, we will yes yeah. um, do we want to just go through them and then we can vote at the end why don't we do that? Yeah. Why okay. don't we do that? If you would mind. I don't mind at all. I would rather have a uh, full group here. I, now I understand why you're queuing me. Thank you. I'm a little slow. 
Um, yes, why don't we keep going? Okay, let me keep going. Um, Article 3 and Article 4 are kind of tied together, but they're separate on the warrant. Um, shall the district uh, continue? Shall the district discontinue? A little typo there. The asbestos removal fund with said fund principal and accumulated interest to date of withdrawal to be transferred to the school district's general fund. Basically, what, what that is, we have $50,000, uh, 50525 approximately at this point in time in the asbestos removal fund. In uh, the past few years, we've been placing the asbestos um, projects in the operating budget, therefore not giving access to monies in these funds. The only way you can get money out of this fund is through one article and we've been utilizing the operating budget. So we'd like to discontinue this fund, let it go into the general fund, and then under Article 4, bring it back into the capital reserve funds in the form of adding it to the school district repair capital reserve fund. So it would be dissolved and then put back into the school district capital repair reserve fund. Um, that is down to around $21,000, $22,000. If you remember, the last expenditure we made out of that fund was for the bleachers for the high school of around 98500 And it's a good thing we had that money there at that time. Uh, so this is just in an effort to, to build this fund back up. It would make it around maybe, you know, $70,000 plus that we'd have in the fund uh, just by dissolving the asbestos uh, fund that's currently available. We have that in the operating budget, the asbestos uh, uh, removal, and we'll probably have it next year, then it's gone. So it's, it's, it's at the end of its lifespan. So those two together. Um, Article 5 is the collective, a bargaining, the collective bargaining agreement between the Merrimack School Board and the Merrimack Educational Support Staff, which calls for the following net change in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels over the amount paid in the first year. First year, we're looking at an estimated increase of $208,398. Uh, 2016, 2017, uh, 212, 331, 2017, 2018, 220, 201, and further to raise and appropriate the sum of $208,398 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement of those that would be paid at the current, current staffing rate. Um, the particulars of that Warren article, um, I have my sheet here right over here, is basically, in, in essence, um, this is for the support staff. The support staff uh, is comprised of the custodians, food service pe personnel, uh, administrative assistance, um, maintenance mechanics, uh, again, custodians, um, Parents and Title I school pa yeah, educators and Title I people. Uh, so it is the, uh, the lower end of our pay scale. It's a three-year uh, contract, and uh, it is a 3% per year. But we are also getting back uh, a one percent buyback in the uh, health insurance area. So each year we're saving fifty thousand dollars. So it's getting down from uh, where it is uh, at ninety four uh, six down to ninety three seven, and then so forth and so forth. So there is a a savings. Uh, that continues along to get down to uh, an amount where um, the support staff is paying more for their health insurance. It actually works out to, even though it's uh, 90 some odd percent,
you know, in the first year, ah, here's my sheet. In the first year, 93.7, it goes to that. But, you know, it's actually probably off the uh, HMO plan. It's around, uh, off the blue choice plan, it's around 85.15. Off the JY plan, it's around 48% that they have to pay in. So uh, using the HMO as the base uh, raises the proportionate uh, amount that they have to contribute to the other plans if they want to buy up to them. So we think this is a good uh, agreement. It took a while to negotiate and hammer out. If you look over the, the course of the three years, on average, um, you're looking at a increase in take-home pay of, on average, for employee, $540. Uh, year two, $624. In year three, $650. Um, you know, that would buy you a cup of coffee every day, probably. So that's what we're looking for, a net increase for these people to have a uh, three-year contract. It offers us stability. It offers them peace of mind, and it's always good to have uh, your support staff and your teachers under contract and not, uh, not under contract. That's not the way we've operated in this school district, and uh, uh, we don't uh, intend to uh, begin right now. So that's article. Five for your consideration. Article six is just a trailer warrant article. <coughs> it says, shall the district, if Article five is defeated, authorize the school board to call one special meeting at its option to address Article five cost items only. Um, this is a trailer uh, article that allows you to go back without uh, petitioning the superior court uh, we've had this one um, at the end of every labor contract that we've ever put forward and I've ever been a part of. Um, you don't have to go through the, uh, the process of trying to prove that it's an emergency <coughs> situation to go and uh, get the uh, approval of superior court. You can just do it and all you're, all you're talking about is money. You're not talking about any other language. All you're talking about is the bottom line dollar amount that would be uh, renegotiated and brought back to the voters if the school board chose to. They don't have to choose to, but they could chose, choose to. Um, the Article 7 is for the um, consolidation of central office and special services. It reads, shall the district raise and appropriate the sum of $1,709,646 gross budget for the construction and original equipping of a new special services and central office consolidated building and for the demolition and paving over of the sites that formerly contained the former central office and special services buildings and authorize the issuance of bonds and notes of not more than $1,709,646 for such purpose in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33-1, as amended, and further to raise and appropriate by general taxation the sum of $35,300 for the purpose of interest payments on said bonds or notes during the fiscal year 15, 16, and authorize the school board to issue, negotiate, sell, and deliver said bonds and notes and determine the interest rate uh, thereon and the maturity and other terms thereof. And finally, to authorize the school board to apply for and obtain any and accept any federal, state, or other aid, if any, which may be available for said project. That's a mouthful, but basically it's uh, to raise $1.7 million to build a new central office, um, uh, which houses special services also um, at the site that I had mentioned before, and to take the uh, two buildings, the blue house and the greenhouse, as we call them, uh, bring them back to rubble, uh, their original 
state and to repave that area over with parking. Um, it also includes um, furniture for the conference room. We hadn't put that in the budget prior to. It was just building costs. There was no furniture in there. That's the on only new furniture that you would have in that, uh, in that item. It also includes uh, a contingency uh, in case uh, we hit some unexpected, uh, you know, areas where there are some subsurface conditions that need some uh, taking care of, um, and it does include a line item for uh, technology and fiber connections because we would need a fiber run from uh, the high school to that building to hook us up to the network. So that's how we arrived at the total of $1.7 million from the CIP original costs of 1.5. Um, after that, we have, it's on my sheet is Article 7, but it's really Article 8, uh, which is the operating budget. So shall the district raise and appropriate? It's an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately. The amount set forth in the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by vote of the first session for the purpose set forth therein totally totaling seventy million four hundred and eight thousand nine hundred and nineteen dollars. Should this article be defeated, the operating budget shall be shall be seventy one five thousand dollars five thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous actions of the district or by law or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA forty colon thirteen to take up the issue of a revised operating budget. So if this uh, article fails in the end you can choose to accept the default budget, which is more than the operating budget, or you could go back and uh, try and negotiate uh, another budget and go through the whole process, budget committee, public hearings, everything like that again, um, which uh, wouldn't be, you know, advisable, I would say. But those are your warrant articles as we had discussed and uh, as we've uh, talked about and put down in not necessarily the order they would be in. Uh, we just changed the order here for your purposes, um, leaving uh, ones that would probably promote more discussion at the end and uh, leaving those uh, that are more cut and dry at the beginning. Um, if you went forward with a bond for a central office, that would have to be the first article. The labor negotiation article would have to be uh, right after that. So that's it in a nutshell. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, with Article 2, there's, there's no wording or amount changes that can or should be made to that article. So um, I believe we had on the table... Uh, a motion to recommend, um, I forget who Andrew made, Aunt, Mr. Schneider seconded by, by Vice Chair Barnes. So is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor of recommending what's called Article 2 here signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed none. Uh, that vote carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Um, so we'll move to Article 3. Shall the district discontinue the asbestos removal fund with said fund principal and accumulated interest to date of withdrawal to be transferred to the school district's general fund in the uh, amount, approximate amount remaining $50,525. Is there a motion? Vice Chair Barnes. I move that we uh, approve Article 3 as written. Is there a second? Made by Mr. Schneider. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor of recommending Article 3 say aye. Aye. Uh, that motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Article 4, shall the district raise and appropriate 
an amount up to $50,525 and transfer that amount to the school district uh, repair capital reserve fund. Um, are there any motions on this? Ms. Gualiumi. I'd like to make a motion that we approve Article 4 as written. Is there a second? Mr. Schneider, any discussion? Uh, Ms. Gualiumi, it's your motion. Um, I think that um, that this makes sense because <clears throat> our um, our fund has been depleted as a result or is at a very minimal balance, which I believe is around fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars. Is that correct? Twenty thousand? What is it, Matt? Twenty one. Around twenty one thousand dollars. Okay. Um, because of the emergency bleacher purchase, so it makes um, sense that we have a little bit more in there. Also, we may need to tap it should there be any issues with the goalpost um, on the field. So that's why um, we're going to support it. Thank you. Further discussion? Mr. Schneider. I actually want to question this. Um, the net amount that we would have in the in the, uh, the repair capital reserve fund would only be about 72000 give or take, by the time we get done. Given the fact that we had to spend nearly $100,000 to repair the bleachers this past year, within this past year, I'm wondering if this motion is better suited to add more money to get us close to the hundred thousand dollars, just in case. Because I, I understand this is a, it's worded in a way where it's taking from one right into the other, so it has no effect on any other. Any you don't have to raise any additional funds or anything like that. But on the other hand, does the board feel comfortable that seventy thousand is sufficient in that capital reserve fund? I mean, in, in the repair fund for this year. Okay. Uh, Mr. Powell. I, for one, agree that we need to try and get that back up to close to 100000 but I don't feel comfortable in doing it in the way that you suggest, um, simply for the fact that it's really easy to show where the $50,000 is coming from. Mm -hmm. If we change that number to make it more, then I think we risk the, um, the chance of losing it all. That either deliberative session or at the voting booth where people will vote no. And then it's just gonna go back into general fund and be returned to the taxpayers. Um, I think a cleaner way of doing it is how we used to do capital reserve funds in the past of put an article at the end of any unencumbered funds and deposit them in there. Um, I would be in support of that, but I wouldn't be in support of, of changing this $50,000 number. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, Vice Chair Barnes. Um, I would hate to put another article putting more funds into the same area. So I understand your, your motivation, Davis. Um, Andy, I understand your motivation as well to get that 100000 up. But I think what we need to do is make it a couple-year project plan. And I think we don't want to convolute right now that money's coming from one and going to another. It is going to supplement as well. It's not going to get us to where we want to be or where we should be, but it's going to get us much closer. Um, that being said, I think next year we want, you know, looking at what comes up in the year. We'll, you know, we may have to tap into it. We may not. We may have to build off seventy-two thousand. We may have to build off less because we have an emergency um, encumbrance of uh, that we have to take care of. So, that being said, I think we need to keep it clean, um, and then consider for for long-term planning, um, a, a long-term plan to get that fund to a healthy level for long-term use. So, I would I would not want to take off the message that this is exactly where that money is coming from. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Ms. Gualiumi. I'm very similar to what everyone else said. I feel like there's a perception issue if all of a sudden, you know, one fund is, is coming away but the other is bad and then that much more. Um, so I'm, I'm really comfortable leaving my motion as I, as I stated. Okay. Um, and, and I uh, actually am... <laughs> When I heard the motion, um, I, I was quite supportive of the uh, motion because I, uh, I mean, we don't have to go back too far back in history to know that we just spent a hundred thousand dollars out of an emergency fund. That if we got something of similar scope and size uh, next year, we wouldn't be able to f even fund out of uh, that fund. So, um, I, I, I really do want to see us uh, build this back up. Um, I hadn't uh, considered the confusion uh, factor, I, I guess, that folks are, are stating. Um, you know, with these 
uh, articles, it, the linkage to us is clear, um, yet what happens in the booth could go any number of ways, right? In other words, uh, the um, discontinuation of the asbestos fund could fail, meaning we keep an asbestos fund, right? And we raise and appropriate the same amount anyway, right? And vice versa, right? We could discontinue the fund. It rolls into the general fund um, and we don't seed the emergency repair fund, right? Because that fails and therefore it gets returned as surplus. So there's any number of combination of things that, that could come out of this. Um, uh, but I understand the point that people are making about confusion and maybe doing it in a multi-year fashion. So I, uh, I will support the, the recommended motion, but I, I definitely like the idea of building this back up. So is there further discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll put that motion to a vote. All those in favor of recommending Article 4 as written uh, signify by saying aye. Opposed, none. The motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Which takes us now to Article 5, which is the uh, Merrimack Educational Support Staff Association Agreement. Um, I won't read it all again, um, as Mr. Chevenel already did, and uh, since the way that these amounts are, are laid out and are agreed to, I, I don't think there's much room to amend. So is there a motion to recommend Article 5 made by Vice Chair Barnes, seconded by Mr. Schneider? How appropriate our negotiating team. Uh, discussion, Vice Chair Barnes. Um, a couple things that um, Matt didn't mention, and one is that I, I didn't hear you mention the number of employees. When we're talking about um, the annual um, increases, the 208,398, that's 303 employees. So that's, that's spreading quite a wide net. And the average, if you take every, um, every unit of person, the, uh, all 303 salaries, take their hourly rate, divide that um, sum by the number of employees, the average hourly rate is $15.88 in this contract. So um, when you're talking about this, this expenditure, it's, it's going uh, you know, across a lot of people and you know, keeping them from uh, taking a negative year over year at that hourly rate of pay. So, and they're not, you know, they're not seeing a, a huge, you know, return. So, but they're also not seeing a, a huge hit. And that was the goal, to find a balance. So I wanted to throw that in there. Great. Further discussion? Mr. Schneider. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like also to make clear that even though we stated that the increase is 3% per year on, on this pay scale with the, as Matt and, and Shannon have stated, the sort of the lower paid personnel in our district, I want to make sure people really understand that today the contribution in the current co year of the contract is 94 six you know um, contribution for the health care in each and every year there's one percent more towards the employees it goes 94 six th this currently to 93 seven in the first year 92 eight in, in the second year and 91 nine in the third in the third year of the contract that's movement in every year so that even though they're getting this percent increase they're getting a there's, they're putting more, and that's been our strategy for health care is to increase each and every year of a contract the participation of the employees, and we were able to achieve that in this agreement while keeping the, the a relatively modest increase at the same time. So um, I'm very comfortable with this given the overall picture of it because it drives us towards our goal to improve and increase the health care contribution of the employees. So. Thank you. Ms. Guayumi. Um, I'm also in favor of this, but I wondered if we could just spend just a moment talking about the effect on the other plans. Um, so Andy had addressed the Matthew Thornton plan, which where the employee has the, con they have the contribution that will go down a percentage to what the 91.9, right? But if they're on the blue choice or the JY plan, um, they're they're paying contributing quite a bit more than just that right so the Matt if I remember from last night at the budget committee we discussed that the JY plan 
they're contributing 43% yeah, if 42. they want 42.81 42.81% and then if they select the blue choice, they're paying 15%. It's 85, 15, that's correct. If we're paying 85, they're paying 15. Mm -hmm. Right. They're okay. paying 15%, right. we're paying 85. Okay, so I, I just feel like it's good to see the context of it. Um, although, you know, a majority, right, of our staff do select the Matthew Thornton plan. Um, right now, the um, majority by a slight margin, except the uh, the Matthew Thornton plan, not overwhelming. Um, it will probably it's mo been moving in that direction because people want to keep more money in their pockets, so they've been moving to that plan. But when you say you know 937, it's really a misnomer because it's really. You know, 85, 15, and then four, 60, 60, 40, you know, on the top plan. Right. So but you really need to state both of them because it's not, you know, it's 85, 15, and, you know, 93, 7. So you can't get hung up on one, just one number without saying the rest of them. So there's a significant number of employees that are paying 15%. Absolutely. So that's what I wanted to point out. Correct. Thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, I, too, will vote to uh, recommend this article. I think it's a, a good agreement for the district as well um, as uh, the Merrimack Educational Support Staff Association that was negotiated in good faith by both uh, teams, and uh, I, I can soundly support the agreement. So with that, we will put this to a vote. All those in favor of artic recommending Article 5 as written say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Article 5 uh, is recommended by a vote of 5 to 0. That takes us to Article 6. Shall the district, if Article 5 is defeated, authorize the school board to call one special meeting at its option to address Article 5 cost items only? Is there a motion to recommend? Made by Vice Chair Barnes. Second by Mr. Schneider. Would you like to speak to it? Mostly housekeeping. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. That carries 500 zero, zero as well. Which takes us now to Article 7, special warrant article. This is, uh, and I, again, I won't read it uh, again, it's wordy uh, as it has to be for, for legal purposes, but this is the uh, article to uh, construct a new special services and central office consolidated building and raise uh, uh, in the form of a bond $1.7 um, million uh, for that purpose. Um, is there a motion? Mr. Schneider. I move that we not place this article on, this, on the warrant for this year. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Schneider uh, moved that we not place this article on the warrant this year. Just thought, I just wanted to make sure I heard it. Yep. Thank is, you. is there a second? I will second it for discussion. Would you like to speak to it? Sure. It's, it's awkward for me being the, um, the liaison into the Planning and Building Committee, having been with the Planning and Building Committee through all of their steps and processes as they've gone through the charge that we gave them this year. I believe that as I stated last week when our last meeting um, when we, they went and presented the uh, their report and their recommendation that ultimately a new building is the appropriate time or appropriate f action that we as a board should take um, to solve the problems that we have with the SAU and the SPED situation. But for the same reasons that I gave l that last time, I believe that it's appropriate for us as a school board to put this forward when the winds of uh, funding are blowing in a direction that favors the taxpayers. Specifically, if we look two years out, we find that um, that we're in that the final year of the $180,000 uh, gas line retrofit. Uh, we also find ourselves with just a couple of years left on things like the Honeywell retrofit and things, so our bonded debt starts to slide off fairly soon. That year also the capital, um, 
the the capital improvement plan has no roof in that that year so we've got a we don't have a lot of large expenses that time I think also that if we are going to do this and put the warrant out for the building we at the same time need to um, frankly we need to have uh, a contingency plan in place and really do our our, our planning um, that if it doesn't pass that we're prepared as a board to do something with the SAU and SPED buildings and the people that work there because I think personally that putting a building out this year on a warrant having it passed but not prepared to do something in the near term is not sending the right message to the voters so I would prefer that we as a board not put this warrant article out this year for those reasons and we can go in more detail if we need to but thank you is there further discussion vice chair Barnes um, the one thing I will bring to the discussion and it's not um, regarding the SA Fed building at all is as we discussed you know timing we were concerned that uh, the town council would be putting up their garage and they have decided not to do that this year at this point I don't know that they have a, a target year to do that but this is not going to be the year I don't know if that changes anyone's opinion but I thought it was in information that uh, was worthy of sharing so thank you mr. Powell I'm not going to vote in favor of this and I just want to restate what I have said in the past that um, while we do owe a fiscal responsibility to the district we also owe a moral and legal obligation to the employees that are housed inside those buildings um, which could in turn turn into a fiscal responsibility um, while I appreciate your um, your explanation and such Andy I, I just um, at some point we have to bite the bullet this has been put off and put off and put off way too many years and we just have to do a better job of, of selling it to make the voters understand why it's necessary at this time Ms. Kualyumi um, I'm gonna support this um, this gives me the same feeling I would get if I needed to put a new roof on my house it's it's one of those things that you gotta bite the bullet sometime and it feels like there's never a good time um, and it it <clears throat> is something that you know is sorely needed um, those spaces you know we've all been inside those offices and they just need to be they're not it's deplorable um, the condition but um, Matt can you speak a little bit about the impact to the taxpayer um, as it relates to this if this were to pass well the first year obviously the impact would be minimal because you're talking a half year's interest thirty thousand dollars so there's there's really nothing there uh, but as far as the the bond payments it'd be uh, 60 60 cents on the, the tax rate 60 cents a thousand basically no six cents a thousand because uh, it'd be a hundred thousand dollars <coughs> And so we're talking 18 cents a thousand for the first year um, on a $300,000 house, and uh, that would be around 18 bucks. So that's what we're talking about when you're talking about bond payments. Um, I have another question. Um, last night at the budget committee meeting, you had talked about the meeting space, the conference area space that's being proposed, and it being a very large space, I want to say with 2,200 or 2,300 square feet that's configurable, um, that can be used for a variety of purposes. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that to us? Sure. I mean, and anybody here can chime in on that space, uh, especially Mark and, and Marge, because they'll be the the primary utilizers of it for for training sessions but when you think about it it's, it's basically the size of uh, two and a half good sized classrooms um, it's a meeting space with a uh, divider in the middle so you could have two concurrent sessions going on it would allow for um, training uh, to happen during the day I believe uh, Mark was probably at Ceresk today in a training session because we don't have the proper um, space here the only conference room available we have is uh, the high school conference room and you can't fit any people in that 
but if we had a, a space on site that you could fit 50, 75 people, uh, 100 people in there and have Dr. McLaughlin up at the podium with his uh, laser pointer there, uh, giving uh, his, uh, you know, uh, orientations, his, uh, you know, trainings and whatnot. It would serve a great purpose for us to get everybody to gather in one spot. And like I said, two items, two things could be going on concurrently. It'd be a great spot for us for leadership because we have, you know, meetings in that uh, high school conference room right now. Uh, we would utilize it. Uh, definitely we could cordon off a section and not have to uh, bump up against anybody else if we were doing any collective bargaining agreements. We'd have all the information. We'd have all our computers right there. So if we wanted to run some schedules real quick, come back to the table, we could do that as opposed to running down the hallway, going outside into the elements, et cetera. So it, it's a multifunction space. Is it possible, I was thinking of this on my way home, kind of a wild idea, but um, when you were seeing how large it was, was it 2,200 square feet? It's around 2,000 square feet. Okay. So what I was wondering, is it possible that it could house non-presidential elections? Could we possibly hold them there and be able to utilize some of the parking mm. that's at the high school? I'm sorry. I just that had to ask. That is a loaded question. I, and, uh, it, it, I, to I be honest, so. it wouldn't be for us to say. That would be the overseer of the election. So currently it would be. <coughs> and Christensen would have to view the space and make that determination. Is it? Is there a possibility we could present that to them? Is it? Would it? Do we believe that maybe it could meet those requirements? I think it. It just has a lot of requirements, Cinda. Okay. I mean, from parking to handicap accessibility to whatever. There's just a listing. Anything is possible, but it really. I'm not sure whether it meets that test or not. I don't think when it was being put together that was. Um, part of the considerations at all. Um, I, I just know certain things have to happen within the given space, and so that would just be something that we would need to ask. Yeah, to, to, to access that conference room um, after hours, um, there's a central hallway with a door at either end, and the hallway um, also connects to a main T that comes off that goes into the central office area. So those doors can be blocked off and that room can be separated by for public use. But there is a door in the front, there is a door in the back, you go into a hallway area and then you enter the conference room there. There isn't a direct entrance from the outside, an exit, well there is an exit to the outside, but there is a, a storage area in the back, yeah, no. Okay, so I wanted to ask, because that was a pretty good sized room, and I know that's been a topic of discussion that we've had here um, at the table before, and it doesn't sound like, is it something that we could rent to the public in any way at all? We could. I think one of the things that we've always said is that um, after hours, we want it open mm -hmm. and available, so we kept it as a separate space because we have so many groups in town asking for meeting space, yeah, and so we thought that would be a service, a community yep. service. Right, I agree, and I see a lot of um, inquiries, and um, and I hear a lot of inquiries of people looking locally um, to be able to house meeting spaces and find available venues um, for various sorts of meetings. So, okay, no further questions. Thank you. So, Ms. Guayumi, can I just clarify something? When when you started your statement, the you said you were going to support the motion. However, the, the motion is to remove this from the warrant. All of your comments lead me to believe you no, don't support removing this from the thank warrant. Thank you. I'll clarify. I meant I would support the article, not support the motion. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Schneider. So two things. One, Matt, have you figured out, given the increased amount of the, of the warrant um, in the bond ultimately, what the, the first year payment on after the $35,000 would be? Second year. Or second year, second the year first payment. year after, yeah, yeah, it'd be be a little over uh, probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it goes from two hundred six to two fifty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, my other comment will be is obviously uh, in listening to the members of the board, the the general sentiment about putting keeping this on the ballot. My comment is is that if my motion fails and this does go up on the ballot, um, 
I want the board to seriously consider a motion that I will make, which will be a warrant article after this that says should Article 7 fail, that the school district raise and appropriate $250,000 to undertake an initial lease uh, or some solution to, this, to the housing problem. Because I believe that if we're going to be serious about this building and it fails, it means that we're all in, that we need to move these folks out of the buildings and we need to do something, and whether that's a lease or whether that's do something else. We can't, I believe we can't keep putting this out, letting it fail, and then going back again. Because if we're serious about doing this, we've got to be all in. That's, that's my comment. We, we, because if it goes and it fails and we go for another two years or year in the same building, how do people believe that we're handling this situation? Thank you. Further discussion? Um, I'm actually going to uh, support the motion. Um, not that I don't believe in the project. I, I firmly believe in the project. Um, but I think there is wisdom in timing. Um, and I do think that um, running off some of the bonded debt that we have, um, we easily absorb the 250000 um, into um, into our schedule. And um, it gives us time to do exactly what Mr. Schneider is saying, which is we believe firmly that we need to do something. Um, I think if we were to uh, put something out there that said we are going to fix this problem one way or the other this year by either moving the administration out into appropriate offices wherever they may be um, uh, there's a lot of logistics to that between now and then and uh, and, and that concerns me um, but I do think that the buildings probably have couple more years in them um, in terms of uh, being able to work there. Um, I'm not saying it's ideal. I think it's as abominable as everyone else does. Um, but I just think that um, a, a no vote this next time around um, puts us in a position where we're, um, uh, you know, no means no a after a point. A and I'd rather make sure that we're going out, going out strong with this article and convincing the town to do it. Um, not that I want to see us ever put the administration in leased space for any amount of time because that's just money out the window. There's no building, right? $250,000 is a uh, one-year payment on a 10-year bond for a building that you have in perpetuity versus a lease Right, which is like pay paying a landlord rent um, for which we see nothing and have to continue to do in perpetuity. Um, so I, I'm for taking the time and, and making sure that we get this right. Vice Chair Barnes. I am just on the side of you, Andy, on this one, barely, but just on the side of you. This is the most difficult decision we're making as a board. I, you know, we, we, we've cut book bindings with hesitation, but we've never done it with, with sadness. The way we are doing with this, I think. We know that we're asking, it's, it's like a lawyer going to court and pretty much knowing that he's gonna get his witness to say all the wrong answers. We know that if we bring this to the voters, we're not gonna get the support that we need um, to do it. Although, um, when we are ready to do it, and I think Andy, you're right about the timing, I think the things we need to do is um, look at our CIP and some of the large ticket items that are there and look at how it's considered a priority. I think we need to do, um, there's gonna be, in that way we can further educate our vision as a board and as a district about what means, what's most relevant to us. And from there, you know, we can, we can sell this a little harder. I think when we do go to sell this, it's gonna take almost the whole fiscal year that we're living in to do that. And we now, as of t what, two weeks ago, have the right information to do that. We have the, um, the, NE the NEASC report. We have the updated <coughs> uh, planning and building report. 
um, with improved information on the um, real estate market and the rental market and the pros and cons. Um, it's this is difficult. This is unpleasant, and I hope you know as as we go through this. Um, we don't want to do this. We just know that it's the best thing at this point for the reasons that Chris gave. But this is not something we do without deep regret having to do it. Um, that being said, um, Andy, your second motion I probably wouldn't support either on the 250. So you're going to get one for two out of me on this. But I, I do it with with, uh, with great disappointment. Um, Mr. Powell, you had your hand up. I am very disappointed. Um, I just have to say that I, I when I, I thought that the board was committed to putting this through um, come hell or high water, pardon my French, um, while I hear the arguments that are being made as far as um, reducing the bond debt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the fact that we're only a year or two away from realizing that should be part of the pitch, should be part of the sales pro uh, process to say, yes, it's going to hurt this year but it's not going to hurt as bad in the following years. And for us to assume that, that we're going to get a no vote, I, I think that's irresponsible of us as a board. Um, so I would, I would strongly urge um, the three of you to, to reconsider um, and, and support this and get behind it 100% um, that, as we need to. Mr. Schneider. So a couple things. First, this is, you know, I've been on the budget committee for five years and the school board for nearly eight, or ne nearly three, so eight years total into this and, and been involved loosely with this building. And it has been the hardest process and decision that I've ever done, not only in this time frame, but in general, because you're talking about housing the people that are running the district, you're talking about the face of the district, um, I've done my diligence in talking around the building situations. I mean, when we ran through and we had the blue building with its issues and it was made sound again, I know where the issues are in the blue building. I know where the issues are in, in the green building. I've talked to administration. I've talked to Matt. I've talked to Tom. I've talked to the people to understand where we are, how precarious to the edge we are, what the what-if scenarios are. I know the working conditions are not ideal, but I also have to balance that with not only the building, but also the other things we've all talked about. We've talked ad, nause, ad nauseum about a track next year and the roof and the chiller and things around the infrastructure. And trust me, if I thought that there was a, a real problem where, or a problem where administration really needed to move and, and it expressed the need to want to move, that, that they see something tenable, I'd be, I wouldn't be making this at all. But given where we're at, given the change or the, or the lack of any change in the buildings just in the last couple of years, and also talking to voters, that's when I asked the reason why they didn't support the building, the number one reason is because the stacked bonded debt. That's the main reason that I hear. Um, so for me, it, it's really hard. I mean, I, everything that is said in the planning and building, everything that everybody said here, you know, even even Davis's statement saying that he's very disappointed in us. Part of me is disappointed in myself too because I want to do this. I'd love to be able to to make this happen, but I also have learned that you try to do things in a way that you have a likelihood of succeeding. And my belief is is that where we are after coming through, I mean, we've already got a budget that's higher than that's two percent, two point one percent, I think, higher than what last year's was. Even after cutting over eight hundred forty thousand dollars. We've got a teacher's contract that's coming up, a, a, a MESA contract this time that we've got to make sure it goes through. Um, we have a teacher's contract that we're going to be talking about next year as part of it, plus the track and other things like that. As long as we are not in, in the pre precipice of the building going, really having a problem, I think we need to be mindful of that from a financial standpoint. But I also believe, and, and Shannon, I will not make a motion. If, if we do not put this on the warrant, I will not make a motion for the, the money because my comment is, is if we're going to put this on the warrant, it means we're all in and that we have to have a, if it fails, we have to do something else. To me, that's really where that second come in because if my motion passes, 
and we don't put it on the warrant, I will not make a second motion. So, you know, I don't know if administration would like to chime in or anybody else would, but I think we need to be, to, need to talk, get our thoughts out, do the vote. If my motion goes down, and it is, then we talk about what the right scenario is to move forward, so. Great, thanks. Um, I would simply, I, I can't say what uh, Mr. Schneider said better, but all I would do is tie something that he said to what Ms. Barnes said um, in response to Mr. Powell um, and, and your disappointment. Um, I, I, like Ms. Barnes, agree that in order to get a yes vote on this, because um, you asked why, why are we assuming we're not going to get the vote, um, I believe that there, there were really two reasons I, I think that um, we didn't get uh, the 60 percent we needed last time, even though we had a majority of the voters who recognized the need and were willing to uh, spend the money to do it. Um, two reasons. Mr. Schneider mentioned one, and that was the fact that we hadn't paid down a lot of the debt that we had, and they would rather see it paid down further. Um, and I think the other reason was, frankly, a lot of people just didn't understand the project fully, um, didn't understand the amount, why it was that amount for, you know, this sort of a space. You know, I can get a house for, you know, we've got houses, right? That's the point. Um, and so in order to effectively market this, we need to, a year-long effort to do it. And unfortunately, you know, the NESDEC and the updated planning and building reports, we've now got two months to, to do that education. And so um, I, I do think we need to set ourselves uh, up for success. I share the disappointment. Um, it, it is one of the hardest things to do because we all recognize how important it is. But um, I, I want to make sure we do it and do it right. Um, so I appreciate uh, everyone's points on this. Um, it's been a good discussion. Is there any further discussion on the motion to remove what is called Article 7 from the warrant? Seeing none, we will put the motion to a vote. A yes vote means it's being removed from the warrant. A no vote keeps it, okay? So all those in favor of the motion to remove Article 7 from the warrant say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Okay. So that motion carries 3-1-1 with Board Member Guadalupe in opposition and Board Member Powell abstaining. So Article 7 is removed. Do you? Do you? Okay. That didn't, that didn't happen the way that I planned on happening with my abstention. But so if one of you would like to, I'd like to change my vote if that's possible. Um, I, if the board because of agrees, med, b because of medical duress right now. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know you're you're not well. <laughs> I'm not thinking straight right um, now. So I, what what I was assuming, what what I in my mind, it, what it sounded better was that if I abstained, it would call a, stale, a stalemate, and then I realized that it didn't. So it did not. It did not. So so I would have voted no. Okay, so we'll we'll record now that the motion carried. Three to two to zero with board member Gualumi and board member Powell uh, in opposition. Thank no, you. No abstentions. Thank you, and I, I apologize for the confusion. Mr. Powell, do you? Um, yeah, if, yeah, just to make it a five hour if you could. Yeah, I, I'm even willing to move um, item number seven, EPEC, up and, and defer copsing if you fine. can hang. Yeah. Okay, that would be great. So Article 8 is the um, budget article uh, to raise and appropriate uh, the operating budget of $70,408,919 uh, with a default budget of $71,005,822. Is there a motion to recommend? Vice Chair Barnes. I move to recommend the article and remunerate it to Article 7. And is... Uh, 
Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm just catching up to you. A second by Ms. Gualyumi. Uh, discussion? No discussion. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? None. The motion carries 500. Um, what I'd like to do uh, for Mr. Powell's benefit as our liaison uh, to the uh, Educator Performance and Evaluation uh, Model Committee is to move this item up before he takes himself home or to the emergency room, depending. Um, and that is to vote on the board's response to the proposed educator, educator performance and evaluation model. Um, at our last meeting, uh, Superintendent McLaughlin gave a uh, very comprehensive update on uh, the model and went through uh, everything that's transpired, uh, modifications that have taken place based on the pilots, the rollouts, the training, et cetera. And in discussing it, we talked about putting this on the consent agenda. Um, afterwards, upon thinking about it, um, I realized we don't vote on uh, something like this every day. In fact, the model that we have in place has been in place for over 30 years. Um, and so I thought something as monumental as this, uh, as transformative as this, um, and something that doesn't come along all that often uh, should be put up for a roll call vote. Um, just want to say something too. I was asked uh, whether I was going to vote on this. As some people know, my wife is a teacher in the district and I often recuse myself from votes uh, that might give uh, the appearance of a conflict of interest. So I've recused myself from discussions of the uh, Merrimack Teachers Association agreement. Um, I recused myself when there were discussions about using level of education as a reduction in force criteria in addition to tenure because she might be seen to benefit from either of those. Honestly, when I was asked the question about this, I hadn't even considered not voting on it. Um, this is a model that's system-wide. No one can game it. Um, it. It's really a tool to improve all educators performance and as such I plan to vote on it there I see no conflict but if any board member does just let me know and I recuse myself mr. Powell so thank you for moving this up in the agenda I would like to move um, the proposed educator performance and evaluation model has presented at our last meeting and also call for a roll call vote thank you mr. Powell is there a second made by vice chair Barnes um, I, I'm gonna. I, I had a uh, a bunch of words that I wanted to say, and I apologize. I can't really formulate them right now. I do want to thank um, specifically thank each and every member of this committee for the time um, that they all gave up from their personal lives to to put together this model. Um, that would be Lori Allen, Kevin Bobbitt, Mike Sorelli, Barb D. Francisco. John Fabrizio, Ken Johnson, Marsha McGill, Dr. Mark McLaughlin, Patrick Scott, Tricia Swanger, Suzanne Wheeler, and Deborah Wolfline. Um, each of these individuals, I, I, I don't think it, that we really counted up the number of hours that we spent, and each of these individuals spent time on their own outside of committee work and in um, and, and educating themselves on the process. Um, Oh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, Susan, uh, um, I'm sorry, Susan Valani. Valani. I was going to say Valenti. I'm glad you, um, Susan Valani from Westhead for taking um, a very diverse group and bringing them together, teaching us about consensus, teaching us about collaboration. Um, I, I think it worked out fantastic. I am very proud of the product that this committee put out. Um, I think it's going to be a model for other districts in the state. I know that, that um, they were watching us as we were going through this process, and I fully expect to hear uh, Mark come back and talk to us about how he's gone to other districts and presented it 
and other districts are taking taking it. Um, and if we can get some royalties out of that, that would be even better. Um, maybe we could build your, your new building that way. Um, so I encourage, uh, I, I know we've talked about this to, um, to the nth degree, but I would encourage um, each of my fellow builder members to vote for it in favor. Thank you, Mr. Powell. And, and I just want to note there was one other parent volunteer on the committee, uh, Jennifer Thornton, that you did not mention. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm guessing it was. Thank you. State of mind. Is there any further discussion on this? Okay, seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Ms. Gualyumi, how do you vote? In favor. In favor. Mr. Schneider, how do you vote? In favor. Mr. Powell. In favor. Vice Chair Barnes. In favor. And the chair votes in favor. So that motion carries 5-0-0, zero, zero, and I would echo uh, Mr. Powell's uh, urging. Uh, I would strongly urge uh, the Merrimack Teachers Association when they take this up to also support it. It's a good model. And that takes us back to item number six on tonight's agenda, approval and formal signing of the COPSYNC 911 grant. Dr. McLaughlin. I would just like to thank the board for its vote tonight. Um, so <clears throat> by way of context, <clears throat> I'll just um, remind the board that the district has an opportunity to partner with the Merrimack Police Department and the New Hampshire Department of Homeland Security to provide our schools with software that um, makes it possible really to bypass the uh, traditional order of an emergency call, thereby alerting a uh, cruiser nearest to the site of the emergency call to the emergency and thereby significantly reducing response time. As part of this uh, opportunity, we can qualify, we have applied for and have been granted uh, an opportunity to be reimbursed at 100% of the cost of this. So as you know, the board has put this in its operating budget, but we have an opportunity to be reimbursed 100% of the cost of this because we have been able to demonstrate an in-kind match. So um, I, as I indicated in the um, memo to the board that accompanied uh, the request that um, respectfully ask that you waive the two-week rule and assuming that you approve the uh, grant agreement uh, that you waive the two-week rule and uh, it calls for a majority of the governing board to sign the grant agreement that then gets transmitted to the Department of Homeland Security for final processing and to expedite the process on their end it's the reason that I ask the board to consider waiving the two-week rule so there you have it Wonderful, and it's my understanding uh, that there are some very specific lang uh, uh, things that need to be associated, uh, language that needs to be in the motion to accept uh, the grant, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Sorry. So uh, it would merely be, uh, the motion would, would be that uh, we move to uh, accept the New Hampshire Emergency Management Performance Grant Grant Agreement. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So I just, okay. So that's all the motion needs to be. I'm just reading um, other documentation require minutes of the meeting documenting um, accepted approved the grant agreement. Please ensure the minutes state that the community slash agency is accepting the EMPG grant agreement terms as presented. The meeting minutes should also include what the grant is for the total project cost, the amount of local match. So you've already covered that in yes. terms of the minutes. So we really just need a motion Correct. that says, okay, great, thanks. Ms. Gualyumi. I'd like to make a motion um, that we approve the New Hampshire Emergency Management Grant Agreement. That we accept it? That we accept it. Okay, is there a second made by Vice Chair Barnes? Would you like to speak to it? So this is kind of a no-brainer. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> it covers the cost of the 911. It promotes safety for the district. It's the right decision for the district, the taxpayers, and the community. Yeah, agreed. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll put the motion to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Opposed? None. The motion carries 4-0-0. Now it's my understanding we have to publicly have three members sign the document. So I would nominate uh, the three people to my right if you're willing to represent a majority of the board.
wonderful. So without further delay, we'll move now to item number eight, correspondence. Is there any correspondence to come before the board? Mr. Schneider. I received an uh, email from a couple of uh, constituents around some of the pending legislation on Common Core and things like that, just so I'm aware of what's going on. So, okay. Any other correspondence? Seeing none, we'll move to comments. Any comments from the board? Um, I would just note um, it's that time of year. Uh, the filing for school district offices will open on Wednesday, February 25th, 2015 at 8 a.m. and will close on Friday, March 6th, 2015 at 5 p.m. The following positions are open. There are two members of the school board for a three-year term, two members of the planning and building committee for a three-year term, four members of the school district budget committee for a three-year term, and one member of the school district budget committee for a one-year term. That's a replacement seat for a resignation. Uh, residents who are registered voters may file at the office of the superintendent at 36 McElwain Street. McElwain, sorry. I could say it either way, I guess. Way. Yeah. <laughs> I think that may be why I've said it. It's the GPS way. Um, I would just encourage you, if you're interested in getting involved, uh, these are a uh, good way of uh, getting involved in the community and helping to further uh, your school district. Takes us to item number nine, new business. Is there any new business to come before the board? Seeing none, we'll move to item number 10, committee reports. Ms. Gualyumi. <clears throat> um, on Thursday, January 29th, the budget committee had met. Um, during that meeting, we reviewed the food service um, budget, special services, the Master Cola Upper Elementary, the library and media services, maintenance and district-wide. Um, all of the department uh, leaders were there and presented to the budget committee um, and received uh, many questions, clarifications um, as the budget committee went through their process. Um, to follow up on that, then just last night, February 3rd, the budget committee met again to potentially make any modifications to the budget and then to basically um, approve the budget amount for um, um, <clears throat> basically for the public session. So the amount that was moved, they did not make any changes to the budget that was submitted by the school district to them. Um, the total amount then um, for the public is $70,408,919. Um, that was approved by the Budget Committee. Um, they will review next week is the public session. It's at 7.30 on the date is the it's Tuesday so it's the the, the what the 10th the 10th thank you it's the public session at 7 30 the budget committee will start their meeting at seven o'clock um, and and I think that that covers it thank you mr. Schneider I just have a question do you have what the approval was by the budget committee for the operating budget what the vote was was unanimous. was unanimous. It was 12 yeah. zero, zero. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Vice Chair Barnes. Uh, Parks and Recreation met on the 21st. Um, something I plugged last year, so it's coming up. Look at the um, Merrimack Dog Park is looking to again compete in the. Um, there's a competition the for $25,000. It was won by a town in New Hampshire last year, not ours, unfortunately, but that will go a long way, probably to reality to, to get that dog park. So um, they will be at the Winter Carnival if you have any questions. And the Winter Carnival is the 28th. Um, the Winter Carnival um, has been a tradition of our, our communities for a long time through the Parks and Rec Department. But uh, they're doing some new and exciting things with uh, the new leadership under Matt Casparius. And one of the things is a cardboard sled race. So anyone who has lived in Merrimack for a long time realized that we used to have uh, put on by the library, Friends of the Library, I believe, a cardboard boat festival. So this kind of takes from that tradition and, and brings it into the Winter Carnival um, space. So basically it has to be made of completely of cardboard, um, decorated up. It can be one or multiple people, and um, there will be a contest for 
the fastest, the nicest, you know, style points definitely are, are in, involved, but they're doing a lot more activities. Of course, the ice sculptures that we're used to and great, uh, great treats. So it's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be 12 to 3 on the 28th. And um, also for the first time, there's going to be a summer job job fair um, for our summer camp and a couple of other summer employers in the area. It'll be at the John O'Leary Center this Saturday starting at 10 o'clock. Great. Thank you. Any other committee reports? Seeing none, I will move to item number 11, public comments on agenda items, and promptly close that agenda item as there is no more public here. We'll take a moment to sign the manifest, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn made by Vice Chair Barnes and seconded by Ms. Gualyumi. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None. The motion carries 400. Thank you, everyone. Good night.